So what we're going to do is we're going to take these down and create another circle. So what we'll do is we'll keep this page up so we know our terminology uh, but when we do need to use that that space and we will need to use that space uh, we'll take that off right and what we're going to do right now is recreate uh, our circle but we're going to make a unit circle which basically means that we're going to set the radius equal to one and the reason that we do this is is uh, because in in mathematics we like to simplify our, our calculations right and that's that's the crazy about the aspect about mathematics that people that find math hard is um, they don't have an appreciation for uh, the fact that math is really the language we use to optimize the world to optimize our understanding of the world so what math is really about is simplifying things crunching what's happening in the real world uh, in the world we interact with into simpler and simpler equations and simpler and simpler calculations that's what really math is about so sort of uh, ironic that uh, um, sort of crazy that people find math difficult because it's the language we use to simplify the world right uh, and it's a beautiful language at that so what we're going to do is recreate our circle and we're going to recreate it the same shape that we had as before but what we're going to do, we're just going to set our numbers to be different, right? And specifically, the zero, zero points is going to stay exactly where it is. All that's going to change is the distance for our radius. We're just going to call that one, right? Because we can. We don't have to make everything to scale, right? So let's do this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. So here's our circle. And we're going to go nine one two three four five six seven eight nine and one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine right and i'm going to use the same technique since I'm not very good at uh, drawing circles freehand so I got some floss here and I just put it around this thing and put this point on on the center of the circle and off we go we're just gonna draw I'm just gonna keep it tight right I'm gonna draw our circle. And there's our circle. I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker so you see it better. So there's our circle and we're going to put the grid on here as well. So I'm going to take my light green, right? And let's throw our grid on here, our X and Y axes. And we're going to call this our x-axis 
I'm going to call this our y-axis, right? And what we're going to do, we're going to draw the circle. We're going to draw the circle with a radius of one, which is going to be the same deal, right? I mean, it's going to look identical to what we had before, but I'm just going to call the distance from this origin from the zero zero point to the edge of the circle as one unit right nothing stopping me from doing that uh, because it's my drawing right let's see if we got a pen that one's dying off this one's more solid let's do it again So what we got right now is a circle and as far as we are concerned we're standing right here right at this point and this point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate right so we're going to call this x and we're going to call this y okay so what we're going to do is draw our right angle triangle and we're just going to call the radius of the circle one unit one anything you want right so we're going to call the radius equal to one okay and i'm going to draw my circle or my triangle right that's my right angle triangle there's my right angle triangle right so the distance here is my X and the distance here is my Y right that's how far I've gone along the X right so that's the X point right there and this is how far I've gone on the Y right what the distance is and that's the length there right that's what y is and keep in mind if our radius is one this point here is going to be one and zero right the x is one and the y is zero this point here is going to be zero and one this point here is going to be negative one and zero because it's a negative x um, axes right negative x direction and this is going to be zero and negative one and what we have here is this is our terminal arm right that's our terminal arm terminal side as well is referred to our angle theta is this right in standard position and usually we don't when we say angle of theta we usually mean standard position sometimes they always refer to it as standard position sometimes it's just angle you've gone a certain angle right so this is our angle angle in standard position this also happens to be our reference angle because that's the angle closest to the x-axis right and remember the x-axis acts like a magnet so it just goes closes that gap so that's the angle closest to the x-axis and our coterminal angle is whatever angle we go around. All we do is whatever this theta is, right? We just add 360 to it or subtract 360 to it multiple times if we want to, right? So this is where we left off, right? With the terminology. And the only difference we've done from this circle to the previous circle that we had was we changed the radius, right? And by changing the radius, we made our calculations super easy. This is no longer nine or a gazillion or a thousand or, or whatever you want to think about it. This is a one. One is easily easy to deal with, right? Easily scalable. Now, what's going to happen is we want to find out as much information about where we are on the circle as we can. So in mathematics, what we do, we analyze things. So one of the things we end up doing is 
looking at the ratios of the sides of the triangle because what's going to happen is let me grab this guy what's going to happen is as we move around as we move around the circle our y axis our y coordinate is going to increase right so if we're down here our y is zero right and as we move up y is increasing right the y part of the coordinate is increasing 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 we get to here and that's one that's the maximum y value we can have and then from there when we start moving down again our y value is decreasing it gets to zero here and then from here it goes negative 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 we get to y equals negative one and then it goes back up again and where y goes back up again zero so our y the range of our y goes from negative one to one and that's another piece of terminology that we have to learn which is called the range of a function our range refers to what the y values can be right the same thing could be said about the x if we're standing here our x value is one and as we move this way along the circle our x value is changing our triangles changing right our triangles constantly changing right so as we move this way our x value here becomes zero is the x part the coordinate we keep on going our x value approach reaches negative one we come back down our x value goes to zero and then our x value goes to one and so forth and so forth you know so far so far and so forth right or how the phrase goes so we already use the word range to define what the possible y values can be so we can't use the range again for the x value and what we do for that is we call that the domain of the function or the domain of the relation because this isn't a function right so what we do is we call the possible x values the domain and the possible y values the range okay so what we're going to do we're going to take this down and remember these terms right the terminal arm is where you end right the side that you're ending the where the angle is being measured to angle in standard position is from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise the reference angle is the closest angle to the x-axis wherever the thing might be right and coterminal is our angle in standard position plus or minus 360 multiple times right so the two new terms that we have to learn is we learn is the range refers to what are all the possible y values and the domain is what are all the possible x values right now for a unit circle the range of our unit circle is from negative one to one those are all the possible y values we could have right we can't be off the circle right we can't go above one for y because that way we're off planet right we're off the circle we can't go below negative one the y coordinate because we're off the circle remember the grid is just a grid as a reference point right it's, it's something that we refer to our 
relation, our circle, is this. We cannot go off world. So the range goes from negative one all the way up to one for a unit circle. So the way we write this is range y can be greater or equal to negative one but less than or equal to one. Okay. As for the domain, the domain of possible x values is the same thing, it goes from negative one to one, right? We can't go off, be greater, our x value can't be greater than one. If it is, we're off world, we're off the circle and it can't be less than negative one. So the domain of a function, or the domain of the unit circle, this is not a function again, the domain of the unit circle is x is greater or equal to negative one and less than or equal to one, okay? and these come into play in our calculations and it's something that uh, we're going to do a lot of and uh, it'll sink in don't worry about it too much uh, but uh, it is important to realize that we cannot the x values can't go bigger than bigger than one less than negative one and the y values can't go more than one less than negative one so it's numbers between negative one and one numbers between negative one and one okay so how are we going to analyze this? What's one of the first things we're going to look at for a unit circle? And in mathematics, one of the most powerful things in mathematics is ratios. And ratios come into play all over the place. And uh, if you're following the language of mathematics in series four, we're talking about units and ratios. And uh, it's, it's, it's the, the most important thing you're going to have to come out of when you come out of high school mathematics. Uh, just for everyday everyday life you have to understand ratios and ratios are super powerful and they we use it for the most simple calculations to the most complex calculations unit circle is no different right unit circle allows us to once we put a right angle triangle on this allows us to look at what happens to our position on a circle relative to the ratio of the y-axis the x-axis and the radius and for a right angle triangle the radius is called the hypotenuse right so we come up with terminology that looks at the different ratios for a right angle triangle which in turn allows us to understand what happens when we move around the circle and the and the three ratios, the three basic essential trigonometric ratios that we have to do, we have to learn is Sokotoa, right? Which is the sine of the angle. It relates the angle to the ratio of the sides. The sine of this angle, and again, it's just it's just uh, terminology that we've come up with, right? I'm sure it's got its origin in some kind of Latin or math. Uh, mathematicians that came up with this thing I actually don't know what the origins are I just know that they're just standardized words that we use to refer to something right like this is called a pen right or a permanent marker that's what sine is sine is the ratio relating the angle to the sides of a triangle okay so sine theta sine of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side of that angle to the hypotenuse and this only works for right angle triangles so the sine of this angle is going to be y over r okay y over r okay that's the sine of this angle it's just the ratio of the opposite side of the angle relative to the hypotenuse. The cos of an angle is x versus the hypotenuse. So cos theta is x versus r, okay? And tan of this angle is y versus x. So tan theta 
is y versus x. Okay, and what these mean is where sine of an angle looks at how the y, the y coordinate changes relative to the hypotenuse as you move around the circle. Because if you think about it, if you're here, your y coordinate, the y length is going to be small, but the radius is going to stay the same. For this, for a unit circle, it's just one. And as if you get move around the circle, our y coordinate is getting bigger, getting bigger, getting bigger. When you get to this point, the y is one and the radius is one. So sine theta equals one at this point right here, right? And we're going to explore how the ratios, how the trig ratios change as we move around the circle in a future video. Right now, what's important to understand, to grasp is what these terms mean and what they refer to. And if you remember some of the videos, if you've watched some of the language of mathematics, we talked about sine, cos, and tan, right? We refer to sine as opposite over hypotenuse because we weren't talking about a unit circle at that point, right? We didn't throw our triangles on a grid system, right? So there was no y, x, and r. So the y, the sine of an angle, is also with outside of the unit circle is opposite over hypotenuse, which is what Sokoto is referring to, right? Soka, sine, where are we? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So x is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent right now one of the beautiful things that you have to appreciate about the unit circle is is this since the radius is one right the sine of an angle is y over r right but r for a unit circle is one so if we punch in one for the radius this becomes y over one right which is pretty trippy because that means for a unit circle right unit circle for a unit circle the sine of theta is just equal to y That's also true for cos. Cos, if we sub in x, we got x and we sub in 1 for r, this becomes x over 1, which is just your x axis, right? So for a unit circle, y is equal to sine theta. That's what we get, right? y is equal to sine theta. And for a unit circle, x is equal to cos theta and this is super important because when you're going around the circle right your coordinate system defines where you are right and if y is sine theta and x is cos theta then your coordinate system your x is really cos theta and your y is really sine theta right so for a circle for a unit circle specifically your cos theta and sine theta are your x and y coordinates and if that's the case then you can analyze this thing and realize where you are depending on the sine of an angle and the sine of an angle and cos of an angle for example in this quadrant let's call this quadrant number one in this quadrant our x is positive and y, our y is positive so if cos is positive 
and sine is positive for a specific angle, you know you're in this quadrant. In the second quadrant, our x is negative and our sine is positive, right? So if our x is negative and our sine is positive, we know we're in the second quadrant, right? Over here, if they're both positive, we know we're in the first quadrant. In the third quadrant, if our cos theta, cos of the angle is negative, and our sine, our y, sine of an angle is negative, then we know we're in this quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, if our x is positive and our y is negative, we're in the fourth quadrant, which is absolutely amazing if you think about it, because we started off with a triangle and a circle. And all we did was look at the ratios and all of a sudden we're getting a ton of information coming at us that we can, you know, look at something, look at a cyclic function. And remember, this is all about a cyclic function, right? A circle is the ideal cyclic function. We can start looking at the angle of where we are on the circle and it'll tell us exactly which quadrants we are and what the ratios are of the sides of the triangle, of the sides of the lengths, the coordinates of the unit circle relative to the radius or the other sides or whatever it is, right? And this is something that um, it's referred to as, what is it called? All students take calculus, right? All means everything's positive here. And remember, the 10 is y over x, right? So the 10 is this guy divided by this guy. So if this is positive and that's positive, 10 is positive. If we're in this quadrant, the y is positive and the x is negative, this divided by that makes the 10 negative. If we're in here, 10 is sine divided by cos, negative divided by negative is positive. 10 is sine divided by cos, negative divided by positive is negative right so 10 is positive negative positive negative right all students take calculus all the trig the main trig functions are positive here all students sine is positive here all students take t 10 is positive here all students take calculus c cosine is positive here now for me I really didn't uh, uh, use all students take calculus to remember where the sine, cos, and tan are positive and negative. All I did was um, realize that the y-axis is sine and the x-axis is cos, and sine is positive above the x-axis and negative below the x-axis, and cos is positive to the right of the y-axis and negative to the left of the x-axis so the way i remember where something is positive or negative where the trig identities or trig ratios it's not trig identities the trig ratios are positive and negative it's just by realizing that the y-axis is my sine theta and cos axis is my um uh, and x-axis is cos theta right and that's the way i'm going to refer to it i don't really use uh, uh, all students take calculus um, uh, phrase very much so this is our unit circle you know get to know this we're going to refer to this a lot we're going to refer to the terminology a lot and the coordinate system a lot and where things are positive and negative a lot and the other things you have to learn is the range of a function or the range of our unit circle or the range of y because sine theta is y right so sine theta can only be between negative one 
and one super 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 important and the domain which is what are all the possible x values which means what are all the possible cos theta values right what are all the possible values for cos theta that can only be between negative one and one right so we can write this as cos theta is always going to be greater than negative one or equal to and less than or equal to one and sine theta is always going to be greater or equal to negative one or less than or equal to one this is the range of a unit circle this is the domain of a unit circle which also means that this is all the possible values that x can be, uh, y can be and negative one to one is all the possible values of what cos theta can be okay what we'll do next is uh, we're gonna sort of jump ahead a little bit and i am dying to do this because it's it's something brilliant and i love it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph the sign function relative to how theta changes okay so we're going to graph the function sine theta as theta changes goes around a circle and we're basically going to see what happens to the y value as theta as we move around the circle okay and it's a beautiful beautiful wave that i'm sure you've seen and that's the wave that is super important that comes into play in so many aspects of our lives. May it be light coming to us, may it be sound, what you're hearing, may it be vibrations, may it be a myriad of other things. That's what a cyclic function looks like when we graph it relative to it moving around whatever central point it has. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.